use of this film strip for paid admission purposes or for transmission by television or other devices or processes or copying, recasting, transforming, or adapting it in any manner, in whole or in part, is strictly prohibited without prior written consent of McGraw-Hill Incorporated. I might be on thin ice with this one, but it's worth it to bring you the Duquesne AV Matic film strip viewer coming up on Thrifty AV. I picked up this Duquesne AV Matic film strip viewer from Goodwill for $9.99. It's obviously backlit. There's a lamp back here. Here is where the film strip is loaded. There's some sprockets that grab onto the 35 millimeter film back here. Playback of a cassette occurs right here. Here's manual rewind in advance for the film. I can have the unit totally off. I can just run the cassette or I can run the cassette with the film lamp. There's a headphone jack down here. It looks like some models might have had a second headphone jack right here. This one just has the one. On the side of the unit there's a recess switch that allows you to go from automatic frame advance to manual frame advance. You can adjust the frame so that it's centered up properly using this knob. There's a focus available where you could finely tune the focus of your image. There is nothing where it says start stop. Uh, if this was a button then it, it's not on this particular model. This unit did not have a remote with it so I cannot demonstrate this feature. The back side of this thing is where the film strip ends up. Uh, I suppose you could, if a film strip jams, you could access it from the back right here. Here's a handy way to keep the cord untangled when the unit is not in use. There is plenty of cord, for my purposes at least. The device can be tilted back without falling over. I found that interesting. This is the model 28A1C, lamp wattage 25 watts max. You can access the lamp and other parts by unscrewing this mesh screen right here. I'm trying to read this date and it appears that the manufacture date was November 2nd, 1987 is the most likely, although that's a little late in the game for a unit like this. The film strip itself is 35 millimeter and is contained in this little can. Unlike 35 millimeter negative film, this film has the wide part of the frame perpendicular to the sprocket holes. So basically two frames fit in the same area as one regular 35 millimeter negative frame. Now this one is suffering from what's called reddening which occurs when these film strips age. Uh, basically they turn red. And this one is pretty red. The cassettes are standard type 1 cassettes. Uh, one side has audible tones that prompt you when to change frames. The other side has the same programming but it has what's called inaudible, which isn't exactly true. It's 50 hertz tones, which is on the very low end of the human hearing spectrum, that tell an automatic uh, film strip viewer when to change frames. So I'm going to be I'm going to be playing side B because this is an automatic film strip viewer, and uh, we'll see how this works out. So I'm loading up the tape. It loads up upside down. Here's the rewind. Let's load up the film. Okay, now there's a little guide 
that the film strip slips into here and you can see it approaching the sprockets okay now it has reached the sprockets inside here and if I hit fast forward or I advance it will advance through the film strip okay obviously I don't have this thing in focus so I'm going to turn the focus knob till I get a sharp focus and I'm going to turn the frame knob until I see the frame in good view. I'm going to go ahead and close this door and hit play. Now I think I'm supposed to advance this until I see the disclaimer. Now turn to the next frame and start sound. I believe this was supposed to advance and did not advance. And sinks with the loss of 260 American officers and men. Nobody knows what has caused the mysterious experience. All right, the auto advance is not working right now. Many Americans I'm doing this manually. Okay, with the frame advance causing me troubles, I'm wondering if maybe I need to clean the head on this cassette deck and so that's what I'm going to try first to try to get the frame advance working properly. It will probably help if I take the door off of this cassette deck. Okay, now I have better access to the heads for cleaning. I've soaked this swab in isopropyl alcohol. I'm now going to go ahead and engage the head so that it's down here easy to reach. I'm going to clean this thing off. It's probably never been cleaned. Might as well hit this one too. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the cap stand. Now this will cause some isopropyl to get on the pinch roller, which is not always a good thing. But that was really dirty. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and dry off that pinch roller because I don't like leaving isopropyl alcohol on rubber. While I'm at it, I might as well demagnetize too. It might be fun to go ahead and listen in on this. Oh, that's interesting. When I put the demagnetizer near the head, it's causing the frames to advance. That's really interesting. Well, I know one way to advance the frames now. Give this head a good demagnetizing. Okay, pull away slowly. And that head is now demagnetized. Let's go ahead and turn the lamp back on. Rewind the tape. Rewind the reel and see if this helped. Without prior written consent of McGraw-Hill Incorporated. Oh, it actually advanced that time. Seems to be working now. Still has the reddish issues. But Jefferson makes the Louisiana Purchase and doubles the country It talked about Louisiana Purchase and the Louisiana Purchase came up. So the frames are now matching thanks to the cleaning and demagnetizing of the head. But this makes me curious. I want to hear the other side that doesn't have the automatic frame advance. So I'm going to pop this out, rewind it, and listen to some of this. These audible tones do not advance the frame. Those are for humans to advance the frame. So you hear the audible tone, you, you advance the frame. Okay, so one side of this tape has the low frequency tones that are hard to hear that trigger auto advancement that I was also able to trigger using a 60 hertz uh, demagnetizer. And the other side of this tape has audible tones that do not trigger the auto advance on the frames. Uh, but you can hear them. 
so you can advance the frames yourself. But this whole thing makes me very curious what the waveform of the audio signal looks like, uh, especially on the side with the so-called inaudible audio signal, audio trigger. So I'm going to put this in a cassette deck, rip it, and check out the waveform. I'm now recording the cassette that came with the film reel onto my laptop computer using the software program Audacity. I'm using a JVC uh, tape deck. It's a very reliable tape deck. It's not the highest fidelity, but I'm not worried about that with this. And I'm using an Art Accessories USB Phono Plus as my uh, preamp to feed into my laptop computer via a USB port. I want to take this car audio cassette adapter, hook it up to my laptop computer, and plug it into the Duquesne and see if the frames advance. All right, I'm now playing the file off of the laptop computer. I'm using the headphone jack on the computer through this uh, audio cassette adapter that I have the head engaged on. When I see this particular tone on the waveform, it triggers advancement of the frames on the film strip. Pretty cool. I'm thinking about boosting these little tones here. Uh, or at least EQing so that 50 hertz is louder. And that way uh, it doesn't have the same issues with advancing. So I've had a bit of fun with this Duquesne AV Matic film strip viewer. I'm a little disappointed that the film strip is so red, but that's what happens with film strips as they age. I found some more film strips on eBay that interested me, so I went ahead and ordered them. So we'll be playing with the Duquesne some more. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you to my patrons for helping me buy stuff like this $10 film strip viewer. And remember, stay thrifty, everyone.